Hey there, I'm Luke the Cooking Camper. Zena the Clamper Camper is hanging out back at the camper with Mr. Cameraman. And I'm about to start one of the coolest projects, like outdoor, naturey plants projects I've ever done. We've got a friend who wants my help with some landscaping. So now I want to um, just talk to you guys about one thing that I could think is one thing that I think could be a really good first step if you're doing such a big project like this. Look at that beautiful lake. Now, one thing, they already purchased a couple of plants over here. So what I like to do is kind of place the plants where I think they might look good. And even if they're not fully sized or fully grown, you can kind of like live with it for a little bit maybe for a day, or even if it's just for a couple of hours, just so you can really like soak in the possibilities of what it could actually look like. So let's start this one, Hedge Cone Star. This thing gets ginormous. It gets 10 feet tall by five feet wide. So let's go pop this somewhere. Now this right here is a spot where total privacy is the goal. So if you imagine that dude, he'll fill in almost all the way to this. Here's the lilac though. And then it'll grow kind of right under that tree. So that it'll kind of fill in that whole little area. But like I said, don't plant it yet. Just let it sit there and kind of try to imagine what it'll look like once it's big. So now I've already moved that first one. And see, this is just my thinking. Obviously when you're doing this for someone else, you'll want to lay them out and then see what they think of it. But these right here are really beautiful bridal wreath spireas. They get five to seven feet tall and up to eight feet wide. So they want it totally solid through here. So I went basically to the edge of this little tree area, went four feet. So that's the first one. Now that one's gonna spread out four more feet this way. This one is gonna spread out four feet from either side so that's kind of like a solid and then this big cone star i think i'm actually going to move these ones a little bit closer just so it's like a solid hedge and i can either put another one of these right here or possibly a different plant now this gets a little bit taller than the spirea this guy gets 10 feet tall but he only gets five feet wide and i don't know I thought about putting him right here next to this pine tree, but I mean, it's just a basic pine tree. It's just a basic green leaf. So I think that next to each other touching, that might be a little bit boring. This is going to get totally covered in beautiful white blooms, at least for part of the year. So I think that up against the green would be really beautiful. Let's see what it looks like if I just pop one more of those right there. I really like that third one right there. And see now, you gotta imagine, this is what I mean by live with it, try to imagine them fully grown. So they're eight feet tall, that whole area is just that solid green covered in thousands of little white blooms for part of the year. That's what the blooms look like. Super pretty plant, I still, I don't know. I don't know about that guy but it would be kind of cool to have a something taller, a taller structure back there. And just for extra added protection, kind of in between these, but I'm not sure if that guy is the right choice. Like I said, he, he's just kind of basic. He doesn't um, get blooms or anything. And then look at all of the rest of these beautiful plants that I get to play with. How fun is this gonna be, guys? I am so excited. And sometimes you just gotta back up and look because now originally what I thought would have looked cool might not look as cool as I think it is. So I was imagining, those are Carl Forrester grasses and then a seed them in front. I was imagining a solid line of Carl Foresters on the house and then a solid line of sedums in front but now that I'm back here, I don't know if I like that. Actually, I don't like that. Now, a row of sedums could still look cool, 
but I, I do not think a row of Carl Forrester, I mean, it's a very modern cabin, and I think a row of Carl Foresters could kind of make it look um, cottagey, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. You could have clumps of them, but I don't know if I necessarily, I can't envision the whole line I was first envisioning. So, I still like the idea of the entrance though. Big clump of grass, big clump of grass with a sedum in the corner. I like that idea still. So now you can see by bringing them farther this way, it's kind of created a little like entranceway, a little box to walk into the door, which they might like it, they might not. But at the moment, I think that could look cool. Obviously there's an extra one on that side. So if we did this, we would need another one to go right there. So it's three this way, three forward, and then sedums in between them, which again, this is what I call living with it. I already don't like the sedums there now because the sedums are only gonna get 20 inches tall. The Carl Foresters get five feet tall. So really, if you were putting something right in the corner in between them, you'd want it to be at least a couple of feet tall to really um, kind of graduate into the Carl Foresters. Let's go see if there's anything over there that could fit that bill. Okie dokie, so I've placed all of the plants that they've purchased so far and I'm just going to kind of look at it for a while. So these are some variety of milkweed. Don't have tags so I don't know how big it gets, if it spreads or anything. So I just kind of popped it down there. That's the very corner of their property line. Then remember we've got the bridal wreath spireas. So that's going to be a solid chunk right there. A bunch of white flowers behind that. I have one of the cone masters, which is going to get a little bit taller, just to give you a little bit, a little bit of a different texture. It's going to look really layered. Still think that there should be something else tall up there, but that's just me. Then we've got the white flowers right here, the aronia. Again, I don't know if this is going to be enough sun. I was imagining just like two of them, literally just right here, nothing else just a little clump of white just to kind of draw your eye down don't know if they're going to be into that but we'll see and then right here i was thinking a nice flowy garden to kind of get you around the corner now i have no idea i think there's going to be steps somewhere and then this is a hookup so not really sure if this one is doable but I mean, with such a sharp house, I'm kind of thinking about like softening, like real wavy, loose. I don't really, I don't know. That's just what I'm envisioning. So we've got some stone crops or sedums, two different kinds of taller sedum. And then we've got these little aronias, which will get the white flowers on them. So a white burgundy purple kind of flows you around the corner. Then I softened the Carl Foresters up here because after I realized it, I had these in straight, straight, sharp turns and ev every single other flower is on a curve. So I kind of softened the curve, which I really still, now that I'm looking at that, I'm not in love. I don't know. Might have to do something else with those. I am not feeling that. But this is what I mean by living with it. Seeing what it looks like. I just think, even though I have them in that curve, I feel like it's still just going to kind of fill in to be almost like a little square or a little circle. I'm just, I don't know, not feeling that. And I am imagining a little flower bed kind of taking you around this corner too. So we've got some, I think this thing is tick seed and then some cat mint. And this is a butterfly weed. So a little orange, purple, yellow. I think that could kind of take you around the edge. And especially now that I'm not putting the Carl, For unless they love them, I'm probably gonna move them before they look at it. I really do not like the Carl Foresters right there. I don't know, I just don't like it. And I thought I was gonna love it, so I placed it there. And an hour later, I don't like it anymore, so now I'm gonna move them. But the other thing I'm looking at 
is the sun is up there. So far, none of that along the house has gotten any sun yet. And the next spot where we talked about needing privacy is actually over here. I'm excited to move these rocks. I like doing this kind of like manual stuff. Now this is where we need the privacy and all these are full sun. So I'm really not sure this is gonna work right here. All of these plants right here need full sun. And so far, I don't know what time it is yet, but they're starting to get a little bit of sun down there. But so far right here, there is not a drop. But full sun, I just Googled it, is at least six hours. So we'll just see once we come here later if there's sun right there. And then obviously, there's going to be a lot more plants too. I'm really thinking about a giant like statement plant, like a big evergreen right there with dogwoods um, around it. The red and the yellow ones, I think that would be really pretty. There are some just random plants around this. I haven't decided yet if we're going to take those rocks out, kind of try to level it a little bit. And then these, everywhere you see a dark circle, these are native plants that were plugged in. Oh, and the deer come in here and pull them up and try to eat them. But these are um, native plants that will kind of fill in this whole area. So the other thing I was thinking about the side that we need privacy is taking this mix of plants and taking it up along, up along where we put those grasses right there and up along that fence. But like I said, you just kind of got to live with the vision for a little bit. Well, after moving it around, now the people I'm doing this for still haven't looked at it, but the Carl Forrester, I think, is a lot more of a um, useful plant along this kind of wall of the property. And it's about two o'clock. Sun's not quite in the center, and you can see that they are about to get some sun. The people that have this property did say that it gets at least six hours, which is full sun. So that is pretty darn good. Well, that is done. We are done with the first step of a project I would do like this. If you're helping someone who has already purchased plants or if maybe you went to the store and they were having a good sale and you just bought a bunch of random plants, the first thing I would do is just kind of lay them all out and see what it looks like and let them sit there for a couple hours or a day and just see if you can imagine what it might look like in five or ten years. If you liked this video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you see the next time me and Zena upload a new video. Get out and enjoy what God has given us, and get out and enjoy nature and food as much as we do. Have a great one. Bye.